Welcome. This is the first of a two-part series on the basic functionality of Auction Master Pro's scale program. The scale software and the clerk's terminal uses simple, easy-to-use touchscreen technology. The clerk will enter the information into the software by touching the appropriate field on the monitor. Using the touchscreen technology is many times faster than using a standard keyboard to enter information. What you now see before you is the main screen for the clerk's terminal. From this screen, you have easy access to enter all the information required for a scale ticket and to submit that scale ticket for processing. Okay, let's take a look at the individual fields. On the far left, we have the head field. Here is where you will indicate to the program the number of head being sold on this draft. As you can see, the maximum number of head you may enter on a single scale ticket is 999. This field, as well as the other number fields, are laid out by number position. If I wanted to enter 900 head, all I would have to do is press the 9 in the far left or hundredths position like so. The numbered button will turn red when selected. To reset to zero, I would press the zero in the far left or hundredths position. So let's say, for example, I'm entering 80 head. All I would have to do is press the 8 in the middle position like so. And once again, to reset to 0, I would press the 0 in the middle position. So let's assume for the minute that we have two head in the ring. How are we going to indicate two head? All I would have to do is press the 2 in the far right or first position like so. Moving right is the seller field. Here is where we will enter the seller information if needed. Some markets use seller numbers and some do not. Those who do not use seller numbers will be entering back tags to identify who the seller is. Sometimes the livestock market's consignment or dock slips are sequentially numbered, and many of these livestock markets will use the last four digits of that sequential number as the serial number. So let's assume for the moment that we have two dock slips where the last four digits of those dock slips are sequential numbers of 1000 and 1001. Hence, we would uh, use 1000 and 1001 as the seller number. In this case, I entered a seller number of 1001. If I press the seller header, it will place the last seller number used in the field automatically. So in this case, it entered 1000 in the seller number field. This is a nice function to have if you are selling the same seller's cattle together in a number of different drafts. Note, after entering the seller number, uh, the registered seller's name will now show in the seller's name field along with the number of head that they've sold. In this case, Mr. Leitner was the seller's name and it's showing that Mr. Leitner has one head already sold. If the seller number is unregistered, the seller name field will be populated with the seller name of unregistered. Let's move on. The way button on top does exactly that. By pressing it, the software will accept the weight from a stable scale and place it in the value in, uh, in the field to the left. Notice the way field is white. When the way field turns red, that is telling the clerk that the scale needs to be balanced. The software is set up to turn the way field red after every 15 drafts. Down below the Way button are two hold fields that I will talk about in Volume 2 of this training session. Quickly said, those fields are used for solder off situations or uh, trapping a weight for a future sale. Below the seller name field, you will see three columns that may or may not have values in them. These are the kind, description, and color or flaw codes that are specifically set up for every market. If the back tags are registered, the software will default to what was entered at check-in time. Active selections are indicated by the color ye yellow. Be aware that the second and third columns are related to the first column. So when I click an entry in the first column, the second and third columns will change to reflect the information about the first column. 
The clerk always has the opportunity to correct any of these values just by pressing the corresponding button. So let's uh, move on to the price field. If I press the dollar sign, this means I am selling by whole dollars. If I press the cents button up here, this means you are selling by cents. One will always be blue and one will always be red. The red indicates which pricing is active. If you press the price header field up on top, a custom menu will appear. Uh, you can enter the price via typing the actual price on a physical keyboard. So let's say the two head that we have in the ring right now was sold for $1,000 per head. We have to make sure the dollar sign is red or active and then press the one in the thousands field. We also need to make sure that the head pricing indicator is pressed. That button is lo located in the lower right and is indicated by the letters HD. So let's say the two head brought 87 and a half cents per hundred weight. We have to make sure the cents button is pressed and red and hit the score corresponding numbers. We also have to make sure that the 100 weight pricing indicator is pressed. That button is in the, located in the lower right and is indicated by the letter CWT. Sounds like a lot to remember, doesn't it? Thankfully, Auction Master Pro can default the pricing indicator by description, meaning Auction Master Pro can default uh, cows to sell, automatically sell by 100 weight pricing or CWT pricing. Auction Master Pro could also be set up to sell calves always uh, to the per head pricing, and so on. These are all values that are determined and updated when the market goes live. So the clerk really only needs to worry about the abnormal pricing situations. Let's move on to the buyer field. Once again, you have the standard touchscreen layout for entering the buyer. Let's, uh, for the sake of this training session, use buyer 3 as the primary buyer number. Many buyers will have orders for several companies, so they will buy in lots. Let's say I'm a buyer that has orders for two other companies. I will buy and place one company's cattle on 3-1 or otherwise known as lot 1 and the other company's cattle on 3-7 which would also indicate lot 7 and so on. This is only one example of the use of lots. Buyers can use lots pretty creative, uh, creative so uh, uh, this is just one example of the use of lots. If the far rightmost column in the buyer field is red, you have the ability to assign a lot to that buyer. This is the only area where you can hit a number in that column several times to get more numbers to show. Namely, if I wanted to enter 3-12, I can press the 1 and the 2 to get the dash 12 or lot 12. If the rightmost number is not red, then you can enter a buyer number of up to four digits. You will not have the ability to enter a lot number unless the parameter is changed to do so or you hit the buyer header to manually enter a uh, buyer lot, just like so. To change the, the parameter that will allow the entry of lots, we have to press the menu button down in the lower right. I will not go through the menu options in this session because I would will devote an entire training session on the capabilities of the menu button. Please note, the leftmost field, zero field, will clear out the entire buyer field. That is used if you mess up the multiple lot numbers or you want to clear the buyer's field quickly and easily. So let's touch the buyer header again. We've seen this screen before. Notice that there are 12 buttons, 6 along the left-hand side and 6 along the right-hand side. These are the most used buyer numbers that were used in the sale that you're uh, into today. This uh, screen will also allow you to enter uh, buyer numbers that have alphanumeric as well. You could do a backspace by using the BS key or you can clear the whole entire screen by doing the clear button. So let's just say that this buyer is buyer 1210. By clicking the bu button 1210, 1210 is automatically placed in the buyer field. With that being said, this concludes this first session in the two-part training video on the basic functions of the Auction Master Pro scale program. Thank you.